would you know it, the Nintendo Switch is blowing up. Yes! We all know the Nintendo Switch has been selling out since day one. It is still very, very hard to find. And when new shipments come in to many retailers, they only last for a day or two at most. In fact, I was just at GameStop the other day and they still have signs up that say, hey, if you want a Nintendo Switch, ask an associate because we are not advertising publicly when we have them because they sell out so fast. Just crazy. And this past week, we learned a lot of things about the Switch that make me very confident in its continued success. So for starters, Nintendo itself, they have peaked, right? They are getting ahead. I don't even want to say peaked because that, that means that they're going to start on a downturn. Their stock valuation is higher than it was during the Pokemon Go situation last year. And that Pokemon Go situation was the highest Nintendo stock had peaked since something like 2010. So the fact that Nintendo is back to those levels and it wasn't just one thing that did it, it was continued success of their mobile games and the Nintendo Switch over the past few months is very, very good news for Nintendo. It means they are on a positive path, one which they could screw up, admittedly, Nintendo has made mistakes in the past, and they could very well lose this momentum, but it's hard to imagine that happening with Animal Crossing games and other mobile games coming, and with the lineup they have, at least for Switch this year, it's really hard to imagine them having any sort of hiccups until sometime in 2018, and hopefully that doesn't happen. Hopefully Nintendo can keep the momentum going. Now... What leads into the Switch being so successful and continuing to be successful, Best Buy and Target themselves have stated that the Nintendo Switch has led to a turnaround at the company in the month of April. Best Buy was actually projected to lose valuation uh, on their consumer electronic sales in April, and instead they saw growth store-to-store by 1.6%, and they stated that's primarily because of the Nintendo Switch. Target... Their electronics section on the whole has been losing value and decreasing in terms of money for the past two years, month over month over month. So it's been two straight years of their electronics section shrinking until April of this year. And they cite specifically the Nintendo Switch is why their electronics section has turned around and had its first month of growth in two years. That is insane. And we know that Target partnered with Nintendo for that crazy Mario Kart 8 promotion. Now, what's happening at this moment is extremely exciting for Nintendo. Extremely exciting. Monster Hunter XX 20, whatever, however you want to pronounce it, Double Cross, blah, 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 is coming to the Nintendo Switch. And this is a big, this is a big story because... Monster Hunter has been essentially exclusively coming out on 3DS. We did get a game on Wii U. Obviously, we got a game on Wii. But the 3DS Monster Hunter XX is coming to Switch, and we don't know what's happening, right? We haven't seen any footage. We, we don't know if it's upgraded to HD visuals. We assume it is because they've kind of done that in the past, but we don't know. But this is a big deal because it marks the first massively popular 3DS mobile game coming to Switch, and this could lead the path for Pokemon games to come, for Ace Attorneys, and you know all the various popular 3DS games to start having future versions of those games come out on Switch. Now, again, we've seen this in the past, right? Monster Hunter came to Wii U, it came to Wii, and then we never saw it again. The difference is, in this case, is that the Switch is a portable device, and it's one of the most popular portable devices in Japan. So what they did, what, what Capcom did is they said more details are going to come about this version uh, at the Monster Hunter Championship 2017, which is tomorrow. Uh, and there's going to be a Japanese release date for the game, which I assume is this year. And that's going to continue to push momentum in Japan because Monster Hunter is extremely popular in Japan, right? And the Switch is right now the top-selling system ever since its release. So you pair Monster Hunter with that, and I could see the Monster Hunter moving millions of units in Japan on the Switch. Now... Is it going to come west? I don't know. No one knows. The last couple console Monster Hunter games did come to the west for Wii and Wii U. But 
Either way, this is a very good sign, and this is a sign that Nintendo is starting to get major third-party support on board. And we know that Capcom has been with Nintendo on the Switch during its early development stages. In fact, Capcom is the reason the Switch has 4 gigabytes of RAM instead of 2 gigabytes of RAM, because Capcom's like, hey, 2 gigabytes isn't enough, we need at least 4. And I, depending on how the resource allocation is working, 4 is actually enough for most modern games, as long as the operating system and all that stuff isn't taking up you know, half of that RAM, which it happens to be the case on things like PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, etc. Now, will the Switch continue to succeed? Well, it's been an interesting week. We had Mario's and Rabbids confirmed, and... It's confirmed seemingly for an August or September release slate. So if we look at how things are logically lining up for the Switch, it is set to have a major released game every single month from launch moving forward. So back in March, we had Breath of the Wild. In April, we had, what was it, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe? You know, kind of a big deal, even though it's a port. Uh, in May, we had Minecraft. And I know Minecraft's been around forever, Still sells millions and millions of units to this day. Uh, next month, June, is ARMS. In July, we have Splatoon 2. In August, we now might have the Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. September probably is... Uh, what, what was the one game there? The other major third-party game out there. You guys know what we're talking about. That's Skyrim, probably the remastered version. Again, the remastered version sold well last year on current-gen consoles, so why wouldn't it sell well in a portable form? Uh, especially if it has any sort of support for any sort of modifications. So that's probably coming in September. I don't know what is yet coming in October. Maybe that's where we see NBA 2K18. I haven't double-checked previous release dates on that. Uh, but November, we for sure in November are going to have Super Mario Odyssey. And I don't know what the big game in December is yet. It could be Xenoblade Chronicles 2, unless that gets pushed back to 2018. We don't know what Retro Studios is working on. We don't know what any other third-party company is working on. Uh, I didn't mention FIFA. There's a reason I didn't mention FIFA. You'll have to turn in for the podcast next week to see why I'm not talking about the impact FIFA might have as a major release. Now, this all leads to the Switch continuing to be a massive success. This is a big momentum get. And no, this isn't like a 20, 30 game library heading of AAA games this year that is going to blow people away. But what this is doing, what is happening here, and now with Monster Hunter happening at least in Japan this year, if not also in North America, is that Nintendo has the Switch set up so at least every single month of this year there is a major game coming out that people will want to buy to keep people playing the Switch, to keep people talking about the Switch, to keep new consumers wanting to purchase the Switch by offering a variety of different experiences. And that's all good news. That means, at least for year one, the Switch has corrected almost all of the issues the Wii U and even the 3DS had. Now, everything's not perfect. We don't have 100% you know, support. We don't have Madden coming. We don't have Mass Effect Andromeda getting ported. We don't have any announcements for like Red Dead Redemption 2 coming. We don't have any you know, new Bethesda games necessarily being announced for the platform yet. But what we do have is a consistent pattern of quality releases that could potentially lead to 2018 being a big year for third parties to be like, look, the Switch has 10 million plus units on the market. We need to get on that. It is selling faster than the PlayStation 4 did. We need to get out our games on that system. It doesn't matter that it's not as powerful as the brand new Xbox Scorpio or PlayStation 4 Pro. What matters is that there are consumers that want this and we need to be where the consumers are. And what what's important for this future Switch success with third parties is that consumers are on the platform that want third-party games. And how you're going to prove that is by the type of games being released. The Breath of the Wilds, the Skyrims, the Arms, the Splatoon, the Mario Kart, you know, the Sky... You know, I would say Skyrim, the Mar You know, whatever. Monster Hunter. Like, these are kind of games that core gamers are into. You know, casuals too, especially with Mario Kart. But these are the kind of games that core gamers love. And core gamers are the ones that want those third-party AAA games. So as long as Nintendo keeps rapidly expanding the Switch audience, you know, selling out the Switch as fast as they can make it, you know, for the entire year, kind of like what happened with the Wii, I think you're going to see that third parties are going to start to pay more attention. Because, see, the Wii... That blew up due to a super casual game called Wii Sports. Yes, there were other games along the way, of course, that helped. 
But Wii Sports was the big driving factor. Wii Sports is the thing that sold 80 million copies. So we know that Wii Sports was the main force behind the success of the Wii, especially in the first year. However, the, what the main driving force behind the Switch is Breath of the Wild, Mario Kart, Arms, Splatoon, Mario, Skyrim. I mean, we're talking about games that gamers care about. So we're talking about a system catered for adults that is being popularized with games that gamers, traditional gamers, want to play. That is awesome. So Nintendo's got a hit on their hands here. The Switch is going to continue to succeed. It's been a very exciting week for Nintendo fans, especially Nintendo Switch owners. And I look forward to wanting to know what you guys think about this whole situation. You know, Is Nintendo setting up the Switch in the right way? Would you like to see them have more casual games? Or would you like more Cooking Mamas or more Wii Fits? Or would you like to see them keep catering to third parties and keep releasing their more hardcore IPs? Maybe you want to see a Metroid announced. Not because the Metroid is going to sell a bunch, but because it shows an, an, a, a commitment to Nintendo's core and, and the hardcore gamers out there that are looking at the Switch as something that right now, oh, it's weak. It doesn't make sense. But it keeps releasing games I want. That's that's where Nintendo's at right now with the Nintendo Switch. Anyways, this is Nathaniel Ruffle Jans from Nintendo Prime, signing out.